counters as well. So Michael is going to have to make his best prediction or go for just a safe play to cover as many options as possible. And here are the leads. It is the Galarian Moltres and the Tyranitar up against the Smeargle and the Calyrex lead. And I actually love this lead from Michael in particular because you get that sand up immediately. You threaten potential spread damage from the Rock Slide, a super effective damage into that Calyrex no matter what it does. Yep. And you break the Focus Ash at the end of the turn. This is a incredible lead and honestly one that I would not expect to see in Regulation G just because Tyranitar is really left on the bench in terms of weather setters in the format. We've seen so many different Pelipper, we've seen Coridon, we've seen We've seen Kyogre, we've even seen Groudon, but having Sand on the field to break Focus Sashes, and now also a Ghost-type Terrestrialization so that you're not flinched from a potential fake out, this Calyrex Ice Rider is in big trouble this turn. Calyrex is in danger, and it looks like Alex is choosing to go ahead and Terrastalize it immediately, but that is the Fire Typing. So. It does remove the weakness to the Dark Typing coming out from the Moltres, but still remains weak to a potential Rock-type attack from Tyranitar, which successfully dodges the Fake Out thanks to that Ghost Terrastalization. There is the Fiery Wrath doing just a little bit of damage to the Calyrex, while Tyranitar goes for the Rock Slide and misses the Calyrex. So unfortunate for Michael, doesn't get the damage off onto the big, powerful Pokemon on Alex's side. Does pick up the KO on the Smeargle, but that means that Calyrex is free to go for the Trick Room and bring in potentially another Sweeper like the Ursaluna or another support option for completely for free. Even though Alex does have the Pokemon disadvantage right now, losing Smeargle after turn one of this game uh, felt honestly kind of inevitable. Mm -hmm. You had the sand to break the Focus Sash. You know that the Galarian Moltres and the Tyranitar together would deal more than enough damage. And I think with a Pokemon like Smeargle, more often than not, getting it out of the way once you're able to set up Trick Room for the Calyrex Ice Rider and this Ursaluna Blood Moon in particular is all you needed yep. to accomplish in this match. Now the Calyrex Ice Rider can threaten some really good damage thanks to Glacial Lands onto the opposing Moltres. And even the Ursaluna Blood Moon with its Mind's Eye ability can hit this Tyranitar with those normal type attacks. There is so much damage potential for Alex this turn. I think Michael's best opportunity here is to try and prevent the Calyrex Rex from getting a knockout. Oh, well, the Moltres actually gets to protect this turn as Alex tries to catch the Zamazenta on the switch in. Here comes the Glacial Lance into the Protect as well, but only one Protect coming out from Michael on the Galarian Moltres means that Tyranitar gets to fire off a Rock Slide finally does connect with the Calyrex, and unfortunately for Michael, it looks like had he hit that first Rock Slide with the sand damage here, that would have been enough to pick up the KO here. Unfortunately, he did not, so that Calyrex gets another turn and continues to threaten that Moltres. I think important to note here as well is that that Rock Slide wouldn't have been enough to stop Trick Room barring a flinch. So it seems like this Fire-type terrestrialization for the Calyrex isn't necessarily a bad play from the super effective damage perspective. You just have to worry about your odds of being flinched, which of course does happen in VGC, but in this game did not happen. Well, Michael is trying to stagger these protects and go for attacks with at least one of his Pokemon. However, Alex with the double spread boost here will be able to fire off the Hyper Voice into Moltres. Deals a little bit of damage, not quite enough to bring it down to the Berserk activation. And here comes the Glacial Lance. Is this enough to pick up the KO on the Galarian Moltres? Of course it is. That's a Calyrex on the field, and that's just a Moltres, and it goes down. So Michael has had to give up that Pokemon, give Calyrex the chilling Nay boost. Does have the opportunity now to switch in a Pokemon like the Zamazenta without the risk of getting caught by an Earth Power on the switch in. Or, of course, this Rillaboom that has the ability to add, uh, you know, stall out a little bit of time with the Fake Out now that it is no longer the Choice Band variant, and buy a little bit of time to stall out the Trick Room. Could go for a Fake Out this turn and follow it up with a Grassy Glide to pick up the KO onto the opposing Ursaluna, mm -hmm. as it is not able to terrestrialize away from that weakness. I think the big question, though, is if that is your prioritization here, what does the Calyrex do in the meantime? We've seen how much Glacial Lance does to the opposing Tyranitar prior to the attack boost that it just got. I think the Tyranitar has enough health to take one more, assuming the Ursaluna cannot
not attack, but still, it's a very close game here, and I like how Michael is trying to save that Zamazenta for the end game once Trick Room has expired. Yeah, absolutely preserving the Zamazenta. You never want it out in front of a special attacker that can hit it for super effective damage like that Ursa Luna. So there's the Earth Power picking up the KO onto Tyranitar while Michael is going to get a little bit of chip damage with the Fake Out onto Calyrex. Going to go ahead and take a little bit more damage onto that. Not quite enough to pick up the KO with the Sandstorm here, so we'll need another attack to knock that Pokemon out. The other thing you have to wonder here, so Michael's endgame is that Trick Room expires, Amazenta is able to set up, do what it does best, and take some KOs back to back to back. We haven't seen Alex's final Pokemon yet, and typically when you see somebody running a Trick Room team as dedicated as Alex's is, one common strategy is to have a very fast Pokemon as your final Pokemon so that it can come in once the Twisted Dimensions has expired and deal significant damage. We've already seen Michael use this rastalization on that Tyranitar, meaning there's no way for his Amazenta to get away from its steel fighting typing. It does make me think that Annihilate would be a really strong Pokemon to have in the back or potentially a Farigaraph if you want to try and block priority, but instead it's actually that Electabuzz yeah. has the potential to redirect attacks mm -hmm. to protect the Ursa Luna, but what an interesting final choice for Alex. Ooh, actually only a Protect coming out from the Rillaboom okay. this turn, so Michael is leaving the Zamazenta vulnerable and gets the call. Ursa Ooh. Luna tried to knock out that Rillaboom with the Blood Moon and instead immediately goes down. You see what Alex was going for, trying to at least buy a turn where the Electabuzz could redirect a body press and then Ursa Luna would be able to pick up the KO with an Earth Power, but Michael going for an incredibly aggressive of play there, not allowing Alex to take control of the momentum in this game. With Calyrex switching out as well and at such low health, it gave up its attack boost. While Glacial Lance will most likely do enough damage to that Rillaboom, given that it's not, uh, it doesn't seem to be a bulky variant, has that Miracle Seed. You have to wonder just how many attacks this Electabuzz can take and will that be enough to protect the Calyrex from these incredibly powerful body presses? Yeah, that is 50% of the damage with the body press and the hammer finishes it off. That is Electabuzz down, and there is just the Calyrex left on the field for Alex. And this Pokemon cannot break through the Zamazenta with the boost uh, from that Rusted Shield. This crown form Zamazenta is extremely strong. It is worth noting that this Calyrex Ice Rider has close combat, and if it could connect to close combat in this situation, uh, it would be very nice, especially after it regained the attack boost thanks to knocking out the Rillaboom. Unfortunately, though, for Alex, with Trick Room having expired in just a couple turns ago, Body Press will outspeed, and that is an easy knockout for Michael to win game number one. Yep, Michael taking game number one in command. On the aggressive and just start getting those knockouts regardless of what the speed is on the field. Yeah, I mean, I think that game one is an entirely different game if instead of going for the Blood Moon into the Rillaboom, uh, Alex just went for pressure on the Pokemon yep. that he was afraid of, which yep. is the Zamazenta. Got a little bit ahead of himself there, but we're going to run it back here in game two with the same leads. Calyrex and Smeargle for Alex, and Michael will be running the Moltres and the Tyranitar once more. And it looks like just starting things off, a little bit of deja vu here. We're going to see what game two has in store. Maybe some of those predict uh, both of these players agree the predictions were all that mattered. I think that it's interesting to see Michael lock in this ghost type terrestrialization on this Tyranitar once again, as mm -hmm. I would assume Alex would not try and fake out that Pokemon once again. I feel like that is something you have to learn from how game one played out. But it's possible that having the ghost typing is enough value to just try and get this damage down, as we did see Michael lock in a move adjustment going into this turn one. Well, there is the fake out into the Moltres, so Alex is not going to fake out the same Pokemon twice, but instead Tyranitar goes for the Stone Edge, still not enough to pick up the KO onto the Calyrex, but does so much more damage. Oddly enough, the Stone Edge is what connects onto the, the Calyrex. And now with the Sandstorm on the field and the big damage coming out from Stone Edge, that Calyrex is on a very, very tight timer. 
It is, but it's a timer that will not expire this turn, which means Smeargle is available to provide the support to Calyrex that it needs. We've seen Smeargle go for Decorate in this position. It could also potentially go for a Spore or Redirection as well. If I were in Alex's shoes, I would actually prioritize the Decorate because you want to be able to hit these Pokemon so that they knock you out and they're unable to go for those spread attacks that would get around the Redirection. Well, there is the Protect from the Tyranitar to preserve that Pokemon for at least one turn. Here's the Decorate getting a good boost to the attack on the Calyrex here. So those Glacial Lances or Close Combats will start hurting. Here's the Glacial Lance, does no damage to the Protect. And of course, the switch in from the Zamazenta will be able to tank this. That boost to the defense, thanks to its ability, thanks to that, uh, that the, the Dauntless Shield, going to make sure that even with the plus two from Decorate, the resisted Glacial Lance is not breaking through the Zamazenta. Now, those Decorates will start to get really scary when paired alongside the close combat. They will, but Zamazenta still has Protect available to it, has Wide Guard as well, so it's a bit of a guessing game for Alex here. Do you think your opponent is going to protect their Zamazenta, which is what we see Michael lock in? Do you think they're going to go for that Wide Guard and then Ooh. you avoid the Glacial Lance, but Spore here to cover Tyranitar attacking and the Protect? I love this play from Alex. Yeah, covering the options here. Alex Alex is not letting Michael get free turns like he did in game one. The Spore covering for the Tyranitar means there is going to be another free decorate should Alex choose to go for that. And Zamazenta has used the Protect. The chances of a second Protect Ooh. are much lower uh, than the guaranteed Protect here, and Calyrex is on a sliver of health. There is just one turn remaining for this Calyrex Ice Rider as the sand damage will knock it out at the end of this turn. If you're in Alex's shoes, you have to just commit, I think, to whatever damage you can connect with this turn. Whoa. Your Smeargle can go for the Spore into the Zamazenta as it cannot Terrastalize, even if it could, it's Dragon. It's not a Grass-type Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So you can try and buy more time for whatever Pokemon comes in next. But I think if I were Alex, seeing how much trouble that Zamazenta was in game number one, you just go for close combat here. But it's actually the Decorate and not the Spore. No Spore, just boosting the power of the Calyrex for one final attack coming out. That is the close combat. The Wide Guard will not be enough, and that's going to be a trade of Restricted. Calyrex Ice Rider will go down to the sand at the end of this turn, but not before picking up the close combat KO on that uh, Zamazenta, which means that Michael now has the oh. Galarian Moltres and one more in the back and wakes up and gets the knockoff onto Smeargle, which, you know, honestly, this just means repositioning for Alex for this end game. If Alex has both that Electabuzz and the Ursaluna Blood Moon remaining in the back of his party, like we saw in game number one, it is good timing for him to get both those Pokemon out on the field under Trick Room when Wide Guard is no longer a threat. That should allow him to go for the Hyper Voices a bit more comfortably, though with the special defense boost that Tyranitar gets, I, I don't think that will necessarily be enough to knock it out before it could threaten some big damage in return. The one thing that I would love to see Alex try and play into here is a bit of the utility that this Electabuzz offers with Faint instead of the Follow Me. You will have to account for the possibility of a fake out this turn, but after that, potentially uh, during the final turn of Trick Room, you can stop your opponent from protecting. You can go for that damage and try to find the advantage that way. With Rillaboom on the field, though, Michael certainly still does have the advantage as that Pokemon's damage output here is so big against this ground type or Saluna. Yeah, the fake out will be able to stall out the final turn of Ooh. Trick Room here for Michael. And that is a critical hit knockoff onto Electabuzz. So it does a lot of damage, but also knocks off the Eviolite, which means that this Electabuzz is squishy now. Tyranitar is able to easily tank that. Doesn't even matter that it lost the special defense boost from turning into the ghost type, just tanks it because it's an Electabuzz. Who really cares about taking a Volt Switch from an Electabuzz? And now, with no trick room, Michael is in prime position to start wrapping this one up. I am curious to see how the speeds interact here between the Rillaboom and the Tyranitar, as redirecting the Wood Hammer here does mean this Ursaluna will be able to attack. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's going to lose its Life Orb, though, in a moment from knockoff on T-Tar does make me wonder, though, will the damage still be enough? 
Yeah, it's a little bit of damage onto the Ursaluna. That Tyranitar is not going to be able to deal much back to the Ursaluna, but the Ursaluna itself also not able to do that much damage. So even though this isn't even the Assault Vest variant of the Rillaboom, without the Light Orb, without the Terrestrialization, those uh, damage multipliers on Ursaluna, Alex just has run out of gas, run out of steam, and Michael Zhang has won this round of Swiss and has advanced as an 11 and 2 